Hello and welcome to another video from Natasha Lee. Last week I asked you if you wanted any stamping hints and tips or hacks and the vote was a definite yes. So here we have a video for all you beginners and intermediates for some hints and tips on perfect stamping. First I'm going to quickly cover the stamping absolute basics. So for example, when you get your new stamping plate, they normally have a protective film on them that tends to be blue. Just peel the film off by releasing one corner, try not to do it with your nails though, and then be really firm in pulling it off. This does take quite a bit of effort on some of these. This is just a protective film for when they're manufactured and for when they're shipped to you. And just to explain for complete beginners that the bit on the plate that is sort of grey and rough is where the polish actually goes and the shiny bit is where you will have your negative space for your colour underneath when you stamp onto the nail. Then we've got our plastic scrapers. Now I say plastic because I would never use metal on one of my stamping plates because it would scratch it. But what we have here is a selection of different types of ones from different brands. That one is particularly firm, the one from Dixie Plates is much much more flexible. And then there's some more we have here just from Creative Shop and you can see again quite flexible and this is the one here that I tend to use the most from yours and it's about the thickness of a credit or loyalty card and it's just got the right amount of flex in it for me. When it comes to stampers these are crucial and I have three favourites here. The one I'm using the most at the moment is this clear one that I actually just got for a couple of dollars from AliExpress. It's nice and squishy and also when you want to stamp onto your nail you can see straight through it so you know exactly where you're placing your stamp onto your nail and it does make it a lot easier. Next I have my super squishy and super sticky marshmallow stamper. This one was from Nail Artisan and as you can see this is really sticky which is really good for certain images on certain plates. And finally we have the Pewene double ended stamper. Now this until recently was my absolute favourite and I always use the yellow end which you can see is slightly sticky and quite squishy. This other red end was a bit too squishy and a bit too sticky as you can see it pulls out the end quite a bit. Every time I do a stamping tutorial I get asked do you have to use stamping polishes and the answer is no but there are lots of different types of stamping polishes for example creams holographics, metallics, this one's new and I love the colour and then we've got more sort of flaky glittery stamping polishes and then we have our chromes and when it comes to chromes these two here are regular polishes and stamp amazingly well so you can use regular polishes but you do need to trial them first. And then we've got our helpful extras. Now for cleaning my stamping plates I use acetone which I've put inside this pump bottle and I use it with a lint-free pad. If you don't have acetone that's pure, you can use nail polish remover, but it takes a bit more work. And then to clean my stamper, I always use a lint roller unless I'm using pigments or dusts, and then I wash it by hand. And that's because the lint roller can cause static, which affects the pickup of dusts. But you can see it's really easy to clean your stamper. You literally just take it after you've stamped, and either roll it or dab it onto your actual lint roller. And now for hack number one, and that is to scrape once, ideally no more than twice to get a really good image. And the reason for that is, if you scrape too much, you won't get enough polish to pick up a crisp design. Also, for most images, you only really need to apply polish halfway across the design, because when you scrape, it will spread it across the rest of the design. And as you can see, I scrape once, and then clean off my scraper, and pick it straight up. And I'm stamping straight onto some lint roller paper here, just so you can see how well and crisp the design comes off. This time I'm going to do exactly the same, but I'm going to scrape twice just to show you it doesn't really make too much of a difference once or twice. Ideally, you want to only scrape once though. And if you are going to scrape twice, then try and go in a different direction on the second scrape, just to make sure all the image etching is filled in with polish. And you can see it doesn't really make too much difference if you scrape once or twice. Hack number two is that not every stamper works on every plate, so it's best to have a selection of your favourite three or four to work on different plates and different images. 
For example, this marshmallow stamper being dabbed onto this image with the same polish and the same scraping technique doesn't pick up quite as well as the clear stamper did. Hack number three is with your stamper, do you roll or do you dab? Well, basically, it all depends on the stamper and the actual image. Each stamper and image, you need to get to know a bit better yourself. So for example, this is me dabbing with my Purine Double Ended Stamper. And you can see that's actually caused some bleeding in the design. Now, this is one of my favorite stampers. So I know that sometimes it's better to roll with this one. And when you do that, you get an amazingly crisp and perfect image every single time. Now the rolling or dabbing only really applies to the pickup of the design. I don't tend to find it causes a problem just dabbing when it comes to applying it onto your nail. Hack number four is how do you look after your stamping plates? You need to make sure after every use you clean them thoroughly with either pure acetone or nail polish remover and this is so that you don't leave any small bits in your designs and prevent them crisply picking up next time. I also store mine in a photo album although you can get proper folders for your stamping plates. And hack number five is how do you clean your stampers and keep them perfect without degrading. In the early days, I used to use pure acetone to clean my stampers, but that can degrade the stamper head, so I would recommend a lint roller or sellotape to remove all the polish off your stampers and keep them in perfect condition. Hack number six, and are you struggling to get a crisp design or pick it up correctly? It may be your scraper or your technique. Some images can be harder to get a nice even coverage. For example, this sort of image where there's a lot of polish and very small negative space. So if you use a very flexible scraper and the normal 45 degree angle, then this can happen where you get patches in the design and the more you work, the worse it gets. The best way to get a really good coverage with an image like this is to apply plenty of polish, probably about three quarters of the way down, and then take a firm scraper and go at a very, very low angle and very gently. Then take a very soft stamper and roll to pick up that image. Roll again to transfer the image to your nail and you can see how much crisper it is. The image below shows what happens when you dab to pick up this sort of design. And hack number seven is probably the simplest but the most important and that is work quickly. I've filmed this in real time for you to see how quickly I normally work to pick up my images crisply. Now it can take a bit of practice to get up to this speed, but you will be able to do it quite easily. I used to find stamping a real struggle until I learnt lots of hints and tips from other people. The most important bit is working quickly to get that image onto the stamper. You've got a bit of playtime once it's on the stamper. If however you apply your polish, scrape, dilly dally, check your Facebook, wonder what's going on on Snapchat and then go to pick up your image, the polish will have started to dry and will not pick up on your stamper properly. Hack number eight can be where some people fall down with their stamping and that is what are the best polishes for stamping? Now generally I do prefer specific stamping polishes and I'll show you why but I'll show you some regular polishes that work too. This is my EDK black stamping polish called Pinguino and I'm going to use the same image, same stamper and same scraper to show you the difference. And you can see with the stamping polish it's really crisp, very dark and very opaque. This is my favourite regular black polish which is Morgan Taylor's Little Black Dress and it's very pigmented. However, when we pick this one up, it still stamps really well, but you'll see when it's compared next to the stamping polish, it lacks some of the opacity and the real richness of colour that you have with the stamping polish. When it comes to regular chrome polishes, this isn't always the same though, so here I am using Hit the Bottle in Spun Gold, which is a specific stamping polish. And again, I'm going to use the same image, stamper and scraper, just for comparison. And then I'm going to use Barry M Foil Effects, which is a drugstore polish. And the colour is slightly different, but the effect is very similar. 
and you can see when they're applied next to each other there's actually very little difference in the way that they've been picked up it's more down to the richness of the color some regular polishes do work very well with stamping and it's worth giving them a try and the best way to do that is to try them over a white and a black polish so this is morgan taylor's rocking my stocking and just applying it over a nail pop with half white and half black we can see that it's actually got a surprisingly good coverage now I'm going to try out Hit the Bottle in Poisoned Apple and this is a specific stamping polish which I know stamps really really well and obviously it doesn't disappoint and it's so crisp over both black and white but this gives you an idea of how you want a polish to stamp over a black. And finally I'm going to use a Conad red stamping polish because this is one of the more traditional polishes but I do find it a bit of a letdown to be honest as you can see here because it's not that impressive over a black. And here I've top coated the final three pops for you to compare. Hack number nine is for those people that have done all the other things I've mentioned but still can't pick up the images. Well etched plates are crucial. Here I have two very finely etched plates for comparison. Now I know that the yours plates always stamp really well. I've got quite a lot of them now and they're always impressive. So again, I'm going to use the same polish, the same stamper and the same scraper. And just to show you that this picks up really cleanly and really crisply. This isn't the case, however, with this Epipola plate. Epipola, I think that's how you say it. And I've tried every one of my stampers, scrapers, techniques and everything. And this was the best that I could get. And you can see that I worked very quickly. It just does not pick up properly. So if you're having problem with your stamping, check that it's not your plate. And hack number 10 is the final hack, although I have some hints and tips for you too. And this one is how to stamp your images straight. In honesty with you, the easiest way is to get a clear stamper, which I have here. And I'll put the links to these in the description because this one was so cheap from AliExpress. But basically when you have a clear stamper, it means you can actually look through the stamp and make sure that you're getting it on the right place on the nail. I will however say this is really hard to do trying to work through a camera and through the viewfinder that I couldn't quite get mine perfectly straight because I couldn't see it properly. If you prefer you can actually just apply your nail to the stamper it's down to personal preference. And just some final hints and tips, I actually find it easiest to finish the design by pushing down either with your fingernail or an onward stick to make sure all the edges are down firmly against the nail and then top coat before cleaning up. And to clean the remaining polish off the skin you can either use a brush dipped in acetone or nail polish remover or just some sellotape. Just be careful not to knock that nice wet top coat. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have, please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for videos every weekend. And if you'd like to check out my other videos or my second channel, all the details are on the screen now. Thank you very much for watching.